on the right side at center to Hammerstrom. Here's his shot and the launch. As a young boy, it was my dream uh, to be a hockey player. I started skating at three, and when I was 11, my father asked me if I wanted to be a professional hockey player. I worked hard at it and pursued it with all my strength. At 16, I began to play junior A hockey. NHL scouts began to watch me, and sports reporters began to write about my professional potential. At 19, my dream came true. When the Pittsburgh Penguins drafted me, it was a thrill to play in the National Hockey League and to play at the highest level in the world. Shot down the ice by Stewart. Here's a breakaway going in on the left side. Right in. It's score! A breakaway with Stewart going in on the left side. After two or three years of playing professional hockey, the thrill left me. I was empty inside and, and felt uh, disillusioned. The emptiness of my life eventually led me to a church service. And the pastor asked me a hard question. He said, if I died today, did I know for certain I'd go to heaven? As a result of that conversation, I accepted Christ as my Savior. Last year of professional hockey was very difficult. I was a Christian, but I was not surrendered to God. I hurt my hand real badly. I also fell into the boards and almost broke my neck. And my life was really at a crisis. And so I surrendered hockey, professional hockey, the only thing I ever knew. And really became a true disciple of Jesus Christ at that time. God taught me the principles of New Testament discipleship, and they worked. And then I went to seminary and those principles were confirmed. After about 12 years of being a serious follower of Jesus Christ, having planted churches, my life took another turn which was totally unexpected. My husband and I are helping John start this church. I saw his skills. He was a good writer. He was preparing good Sunday school material for us. He was a well-read individual. And I challenged him to start an inductive Bible study, to write it. He said, maybe someday I could consider doing that. And I just looked at him and said, what's wrong with now? When Pat challenged me to write that first study, I realized God was in it. But I didn't realize that writing that first study would lead to what Lampletters has become today. I pray, uh, not just at the beginning, but throughout the writing of the study. I've got my Greek New Testament. Currently, I'm writing the book of Philippians. And then because I've never taken a writing class in my life, and because I uh, little feel insecure in my writing ability, I've got Greek grammar books and reference books here, and then I've got another over here. It's an analytical Greek New Testament. And so I try to be very, very careful that what I'm saying and asking and then offering as an answer is accurate. The truth is it's not about me. It's not about lamp letters. It's about God and his word. God uses his word to transform lives. The last lesson here. Nehemiah admonished some men from Judah for I got invited to study with several other business professionals in the western corner of the Twin Cities. Through that I got to know John. We decided we wanted to get together and start a study and as we did, uh, John just let us know, you know, even though it was just the three of us meeting, don't worry about the numbers, the numbers will come eventually and that's exactly what's happened. We found that some other Bible studies I'd been involved in were too much of a holy huddle or kumbaya time and this was not that and it was just an opportunity to really dig into God's Word. It's crucial for me to be meeting with other business professionals and have that accountability. Seeing how the Word affects you on a daily basis, that has really meant the world to me. Um, not only to me, but also to my family, to my kids. They see a strong spiritual leader in their family that is not wavering in the daily things that he's doing. What Lamplighter has done is really began to focus my thoughts and my way I run my family, my business, on the Word of God. So I actually go back to my Bible for just about every one of the decisions I make. And as a result of that, it really caused us to make some changes in our lives personally. Real concrete things like selling properties, like downsizing our home to allow us to begin to spend more time and more focus on Christ instead of all that other traffic that seemed to be in my head a lot. When we discovered the Lamplighters Bible study, we knew we had hidden a real treasure because it was centered around God's Word and has marvelous questions that uh, lend itself to a great in-depth discussion. We probably had a dozen women and the popularity of the series at our church has grown so much that we now had 75 women this last summer. Part of church planting is discipleship, 
I'm always looking for tools that I can put into the hands of our African leaders to equip them and to allow them to help make other disciples. And so we invited John to come over. He conducted a discipleship seminar for us that was very well received. I also think it was a key time because we were turning the church over, national leadership and what was shared really affirmed in their thinking that this was the right time for us to take that step. I found the Lamplighter's material to be very transferable. And uh, John has an open invitation to come back to Zambia for more discipleship training. You know, a lot of inmates are grappling with very serious issues in their life. They have no hope. The material that is outlined in Lamplighters is ideal because it not only grapples with the individual and what he's going through and the results of circumstances, but it also gives them a hope. It gives them an application aspect that is fantastic. Uh, God is establishing partnerships uh, to reach people. And it's my hope that people will accept the challenge to become true disciples of Christ, to move from religion to reality, to move from uh, spectator to participant and influence the entire world for Christ.